Hello hockey fans and welcome to Inside the WCHA. I'm Ryan Phelps. Find us on all your favorite social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. But don't forget WCHA.TV where you've got the best seat in the house. Things are tight up top. The best three teams all separated by five points and the four and five spots are just four points apart. We start in Bowling Green with Alaska Anchorage in town. Falcons flags representing their colors. Scoreless midway through the first, BGPP. Cameron Wright scoops it out of the corner to Alec Rahauser. He gives it back and Wright with a laser upstairs beats Olivier Mantha and it's one nothing. Falcons up two nothing less than a minute after Max Johnson scored his sixth of the year. Rahauser again. This time his dump in was blocked, ends up on right stick, he turns and fires. Brett DeAndrea with a brilliant tip and that's the end of the night for Mantha. Falcons led 4-1 after one. Brody Clays in relief and this was just one of those tough ones. Adam Smith from the top of the circle, no, 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 his own circle. Somehow it gets by Clays and it's 5-1, 6-2 the final on Friday. Smith hadn't had a point all season long. He scored the Hail Mary goal and added two assists in the win. Falcons fans were lit up Saturday night for game two, but the Seawolves try to keep them quiet early. Jordan Xavier cruising around the high slot, puts a shot toward the net. The puck ends up on the stick of Tad Kozum who swats it home and Anchorage with their first lead of the weekend. They'd add another in the closing seconds of the first, Bowling Green wakes up in the second. Nice transition hockey. They've got numbers. Cruz drops it off for Chris Polkamp. A snipe from the slot and the Falcons pull within one. Then Johnson adds another early third, so we're tied at two. Seven minutes left, BGSU in transition again. Casey Lincoln held leading the charge. Nice swim move. Dish is out front and Brandon Cruz is there for the finish. Brilliant play all around. Falcons complete the sweep with a 3-2 win. They sit firmly in third, trying to keep pace with first place Minnesota State and Northern Michigan. Right behind them is Bemidji State. They were at Ferris State for a pair this weekend. We talk a lot about Michael Bitzer, but for good reason. He keeps making news. More on that in a moment. This one was still scoreless latter stages of the second period. Bitzer and the Bulldogs' Darren Smith standing strong. I always tell the kids, be strong on your stick. Look at the work by Ethan Samoza. Shakes off Riker Killens. Beauty feed to Jordan Heller. And it's 1-0 Beavers. Into the third we go. Same score. Ferris State gives Dan Bill to the lane. He'll take it. He spies Brendan Harris out front. The deflection finds the back of the net. And it's 2-0. Down the stretch and Bitzer just holds his ground. He earns his 21st career shutout which puts him in sole possession of second place in NCAA history. Different story Saturday. Love the alternate sweater on Justin Kappelmaster who gets the nod. Ferris State with a strong start. Jason Tackett in on Bitzer. Hey, nobody's perfect. The takeaway, the pass in front, and Lucas Finner capitalizes on the Bemidji blunder, and it's 1-0 Bulldogs. Beavers get one back, and we're even late second. BSU power play. They work the blue line, Adam Brady with the wrister and Jay Dickman, always clutch. Gets a piece of it, that's his 12th of the year and it's two to one for the green machine. Dickman would add another. Charlie Combs puts the cherry on top with the empty netter. Bemidji State now riding an eight game WCHA winning streak and 11 in a row unbeaten. Four to one the final on Saturday as they sweep Ferris State on the road. Let's head to Houghton. How you doing? Nice to see you. Alaska in town for a set in the UP. Keep an eye on Mitch Meek. He's never had a multi-game goal. I just gave it away. We'll get to that. Starting now, early stages after a Nanook icing. Right off the draw, Meek finds an opening and delivers a twisted wrister. That's his second of the year, second of his career for the freshman. I don't think Anton Martinson ever saw it, and the Huskies are up a goal. Just underway in the second, Alaska with a five on three. Justin Wood says, let's switch spots. Sets up Zach Fry with a one-timer. Kyler Hope, nope, it's Tyler Klein's time. 
And we're tied at one, heading into the third. Puck deep in the Nanook zone. Raymond Bryce digs it out, hands it off to his buddy Grayson Reitmeyer. Meek leaks in from the point and deposits it in for the 2-1 lead. I know I gave it away. He added an assist later. Tech scores four in the third for a 5-2 win on Friday. They're ready to go on Saturday. Get out the brooms, right? Not so fast, my friend. A turnover in the defensive zone, and look at that sweet passing play. Troy Van Tetering and Kyler Hope set up Klein for his second goal of the weekend, and Alaska goes up early. And they'd add another. But Tech would come back, tied at two, less than two to play in period two. Dylan Stamen grinding down low, gets it to Jake Jackson, who finds Thomas Beretta like Cool Hand Luke, and the Huskies have the lead heading into the third. Fairbanks isn't done. On the power play, Tristan Thompson looks at the net, says no, feeds Fry for the one-timer, and we're tied. Great back and forth game. It would come down to the end. Final minutes, offensive zone face off for Michigan Tech. They get it to Mark Ock at the point. He winds up the clapper and Joel Esperance just gets enough of it. Huskies win 4-3 and another weekend sweep. The theme of the weekend. Devin Caro, Tech starting goalie, entered the season without a collegiate win. He gets his third in his last four starts. Plenty of banners hanging from the rafters at Northern Michigan, but one coveted prize on the line this weekend is the Capo Cup. First awarded by the late Monsignor Louis Capo in 1991, has been awarded to the team that claims this season series between Lake Superior State and Northern Michigan every year since the 94-95 season. The Wildcats won by total goals last year and the trophy was up for grabs entering this weekend after the team split a season opening series. Lakers stake the early claim, a turnover deep in Wildcat territory. It goes right to Diego Cuglietta, who goes right to the net, and it's 1-0 Lake State. NMU battles back in the second. Adam Rockwood would tie the game in the first minute. A minute after that, it's Luke Volton leading the Wildcats rush. He's got Darian Craighead, sharp pass, and Craighead zips it past Nick Kossoff, who didn't have a chance, and the home team has their first lead. Still 2-1 midway through the second Northern Michigan power play. Ryan Black unleashes a one-timer from the point. Kossoff makes the initial save, but too many white sweaters in front. Craighead gets his second of the night and leads the WCHA and is second nationally with 11 goals since December 1st. Wildcats take game one, three to two. On Saturday, Phil Ballou was feeling it. It was Max Humitz that put Lake Superior State up early, but just a few minutes later, it was Northern Michigan on offense and with an extra attacker. Loggins and Rockwood work in the perimeter. Sweet pass on the weak side, and Ballou is there to tie the game at one. Loggins would add another early second, so the Wildcats are up a goal. Lakers have an answer. Tyler Anderson at the point, gets the feed from Cuglietta, launches a bomb on net, and Braden Gelsinger is there for the tip, and we're tied. Northern Michigan applying pressure in the third. Loggins with a glorious chance, but he's turned aside by Kossoff. Turned to last week's hero, and Ballou drives home the game winner. Second week in a row he's done that. 3-2 the final, and the Capo Cup stays in Marquette. One final set to talk about, no video, but Minnesota State had quite a weekend. Victorious on Saturday over St. Cloud State as a part of Hockey Day Minnesota. 5-2 to two the final there. Also a rare Tuesday night game, the Mavericks took down UMD 1 to nothing. And congratulations, our first award winner of the week, our Offensive Player of the Week, senior Zeb Knutson from Minnesota State. Our Defensive Player of the Week is Philip Ballou from Northern Michigan. A week after playing the overtime hero for the Wildcats against Bowling Green, Ballou did it again with a career-high two goals on Saturday, including the game winner in the third as the Wildcats swept Lake Superior State. Our goaltender of the week, Michael Bitzer, as he added another chapter to his storied career, moving into sole possession of second place in NCAA Men's Division I history with his 21st career shutout. He held backstop the Beavers this week in their sweep of Ferris State. And finally, our Rookie of the Week, Brandon Cruz from Bowling Green. He tied for the WCHA overall scoring lead and ranked second nationally among freshmen with four points, tallying a goal and three assists as now number 15 Bowling Green 
earned a sweep of Alaska Anchorage. Coming up this week, Michigan Tech is at Ferris State. Bowling Green heads to Sault Ste. Marie. Bemidji State down in Huntsville, Northern Michigan at Alaska Anchorage. And another non-conference game as Minnesota State plays host to the under 18 team. And that's it for this week. Remember to hit us up on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and also WCHA.TV, where they come to play, we come to watch. Stream any conference game on any device. Thanks for joining us once again, and I'm Ryan Phelps saying so long from St. Paul. This episode is dedicated to the memory of Jim Johansson, Assistant Executive Director of USA Hockey and the General Manager of the 2018 U.S. Olympic men's hockey team, who passed away in his sleep early Sunday morning at his home in Colorado Springs. The 53-year-old was born in Rochester, Minnesota, had a lifelong career in hockey, and was one of the most accomplished and respected people in the sport.